Without further ado, here we go. Uh, let's start with the commanders. Um, they've made a lot of moves, as we already know. We talked about it months ago with the coaching staff, with uh, the free agency. Just to remind you all, uh, the free agents, some of the notable free agents that they acquired was Austin Eckler, former running back of the Los Angeles Chargers, uh, Bobby Wagner, former linebacker, future Hall of Famer for the Seattle Seahawks. Um, Marcus Mariota, quarterback. You have Zach Ertz, Dante Fowler Jr. Um, you also have Tyler Biotis, Jeremy yep. Chin. So those are some clean and Pharaoh. Those are some notable names. Jeremy Reeves, they re-signed him. So those are some notable names that they um, – also Jameson Crowder, they brought him back. So, yeah, those are some notable names that they brought in. They Obviously, they they, they signed some other players, but, um, you know, not many people probably know who they are, so I'm not really going to name a lot of them. But, yeah, just going down the list. Draft picks, we already know Jaden Daniels, the quarterback they drafted. Uh, that that D tackle from Illinois, Jerzon mm -hmm. Newton. He's supposed to be really good. Uh, he's still coming back from injury, but I heard he's starting to ramp up everything, and he's he may he may come back during the season. So uh, that dude, that DB from Michigan, um, Ben Sanat from Kansas State, and yeah, Luke McCaffrey, wide receiver. They drafted a guard in the third round. And, yeah, we don't really have to look at all the other picks. But the coaching staff got a reminder. Cliff Kingsbury, he's the offensive coordinator. Um, one thing about Cliff Kingsbury, I don't know if they're going to run an air raid because looking, just reading the Washington Post article, it says that it's not going to be an air raid offense. I don't really know what the offense is going to be. I highly doubt that it's not going to be an air raid. Uh, Joe Witt Jr. is the defensive coordinator. As Brian already knows, he he came from the Dallas Cowboys. Dan Quinn is the head coach. Yada, yada, yada. All right. So when we look at the Jet chart, Jaden Daniels, according to ESPN, Jaden Daniels is the projected starter, as he should be. I mean, Marcus Mariota so. is not good. <laughs> Austin Eckler is – uh, the starter for the running back over Brian Robinson Jr. What? Yeah, that's that's the projected. I don't know if this is updated or not, but um, that's oh. that's what they project it's going to be. Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, obviously. They think Luke McCaffrey is going to be wide receiver three in the slot. Uh, Zach Ertz, uh, Brandon Coleman, who they drafted, I believe, in the third round. Uh, that's not good. Um and then you have some other you have some other offensive linemen. Uh, Tyler Biotis obviously going to start at center. Um, and yeah, you I don't really need to read the rest. It's not it's not that good. Dante they say Dante Fowler Jr. is going to start um, left defensive end. You also have Deron Payne. You have Jonathan Allen, Dorrance Armstrong at the right side of the defensive end. Frankie Louvu, linebacker. Bobby Wagner, he's going to start in the middle, as we all know. Uh, Jamin Davis, they expect him to start. I also heard some things about Emmanuel Forbes. They say he bulked up. He gained mm -hmm. eight pounds. I thought um, they said 15. Oh, 15 pounds? Even better. Not, uh, he, look, not, he looks bigger in that picture I saw of him. I said, okay, he doesn't look like an absolute twig anymore. Right, right. Uh, Jeremy Chin, they have him starting at strong safety. Uh, Derek Forrest at – uh, free safety, don't know who that is. Uh, Benjamin St. Justy, uh, cornerback, and um, Quinn Martin, don't even know what it is. So that that's the projected starting lineup for the defense and offense. They, they have them at a base 4-3 defense. And, yeah, what what is your reaction to just everything involving the commanders and just how do you see them playing out this coming season? Um. I don't expect them to be any world beaters or anything. I expect them to get around like possibly 
eight, maybe nine wins. It really depends on how good uh, Jaden Daniels is out the gate and how the team uh, meshes well throughout the year. Because, you know, it's the first year a lot of these dudes haven't played with each other um, on the same team before. I had a few of the Cowboys players that followed Dan Quinn over, as well as Joe Witt as the defensive coordinator. But it's really depending on a few things. You know, it's the it's the how they plan to implement and use Jaden Daniels, what kind of offensive scheme they're running. Also, how the – because Dan Quinn's – people going to say, oh, Dan Quinn is – He's the head coach. It's Dan Quinn's defense. Okay, he bought all. He bought Joe Witt from the Cowboys. It's going to be Dan Quinn's defense. It also depends how can these can these players perform and play the usual Dan Quinn style defense. Meaning, can they win their one on one matchups? Because it's not really, he's not really going to scheme up sacks and stuff. He'll he'll do like a he'll, he'll do like stunts and stuff like that. But his defense is very turnover dependent. And we just have the better dudes. That is how the Cowboys defense ran for the past three, four years. And I don't really see it changing much just because he's on a com- just because he coaches the commanders now. It was like that in uh, Atlanta, too. The Atlanta defense was also, hey, we have the better dudes. Come beat us. And it worked. But when you have equal talent, then you see how Dan Quinn's defense started to look a little suspect towards the later half of the year when you go against those better teams. And – so that's that's my whole big thing with the uh, commanders, uh, the ownership. I like that they actually went out and made moves. It may not be like earth shattering. Oh, we got a superstar player or a uh, uh, Pro Bowl player, but you know, stuff to build build the roster up to help um, build uh, those setting those later foundation for the rebuild. You know, so I mm. expect them to probably get about mm, I say eight wins, which wouldn't be terrible for a year one. Tight. That might win uh, a division. <laughs> I don't know about that. That might win a division. Hey, eight or nine wins. That might win a division. The way I, the I way this division. Not, is. not this ain't. It ain't gonna be twenty twenty again unless some injuries happen. The way this division is looking. Oh man. Um, I agree with you. I think everything boils down to Jaden Daniels and the offense. I don't think the defense is going to be the key reason why they win games. I think this is a 2012 situation all over again. If you remember with RG3 in his first year, I think I think it's going to be something similar to that if they have any sort of success. They're going to have to figure out a way to get Jaden Daniels involved, make him play well, and get some juice on the outside with these receivers. Because let's be honest, um, these past few years when it comes to quarterbacks, they, it's just been awful. Uh, Taylor Heineke... Sam Howell, Marcus Mariota, Ryan Fitzpatrick at one point, and well, I, I forgot the other the other QB that that um he he was with Minnesota and then he came here. I forgot I forgot dude's name, Case Keenum. So mm. it's it's been pretty awful these past four years, honestly, ever since Kirk Cousins left, really. So that's how I look at it. If the offense is not gelling, if the offense is not playing well, I I see this team as a a, a four win team. If, I, if their offense is really, really good and they're clicking on all cylinders, I think this team could win nine games. I think this team it's, – it's all dependent on – it's all dependent on offense at the end of the day. I think this division can be had. I think this division is not that great. I look at the other teams in the division. I look at the Cowboys. They're imploding. I look at the Eagles. They're imploding. I look at the Giants. We already know what hard knocks – they're imploding. It's this division can be had. They're a new team. Not many people know what to expect. So you have the element of surprise at their, you know, you have the element of surprise. So that's always good. But it's it's hard to really it's I would love to pick them and win a division, but it's really hard. I'm hesitant because I don't know. Mm. I don't know what to expect. You know, the Commanders, this franchise, they've always just been a disappointment in recent years. So I really don't know what to expect. And Dan Quinn, can I really trust Dan Quinn? Has he learned his ways? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. So they have a lot of promise. I think I think um, I think they have honestly out of all the teams in the division. 
I think they have the highest ceiling. Out of all the teams in the I don't division. Think so. You don't think the, you think so you no. think the Eagles have a higher ceiling? Yes. Okay, maybe they don't have a higher ceiling. All right, all right. Maybe they don't have a higher ceiling. All right. Um I, I, I think their future, I like their future a lot. As long as okay. Jaden Daniels, as long as Jaden Daniels, he can get it together. I like their future a lot. I just I just think the all the pieces fit. Jaden Daniels, this offense, it works. That's why when we we brought up the point about Jaden Daniels versus Drake May, I always said it's it's all about fit at the end of the day. It's not about just oh who's more talented, uh, who's more skilled. It's it's about uh, does your talent, does your skill set fit with the system? And I think this is a perfect match. I think his mindset, I th- I think his leadership, all bowls well with what the Commanders are trying to do. Uh, and I exp- I expect the Commanders to have a a solid season, whatever that is. Seven, eight wins. I, I feel like that's a win for them. So, I think I think I think that's what we should be looking at from the Commanders this year. Yeah, pretty much. Just let me be.